We, we are happy for the 90% or the 80% that return home. What we're really concerned about is each year, mm -hmm. the 200 and others that don't come home, nobody has ever seen or heard of. Where are they? We have to find them because Jamaica is too small. When you're playing golf and one of your ball gone, you make all effort to go and find, you send that caddy to find your ball. So therefore, it is, it's, it's just a ball. A human being. We're talking about human beings here, our children. The state said them put people in place that if you have a problem, you can go to them. Or when you go, you just go in vain. I just want to know my daughter there. There's no one who's there, and she's there, she's there, she's there, she's there, so everybody's supposed to get locked up over there, because you're supposed to have an underage child in your yard, and you must hear up on TV, you must hear. Since 2006, there have been more than 12,000 people reported missing in Jamaica. Of that number, at least 188 have been found dead, and close to 2,000 have not been found. The bulk of reported cases, however, were children. Last year, with children making up more than 70% of the 2,920 people who were reported missing, there was an average of one child reported missing every four hours. 196 of them have not yet been found. In addition, 126 children reported missing since January of this year have yet to be located. The troubling issue of missing children in Jamaica was thrust to the fore after a spate of child abductions and murders in 2008, reaching its zero hour in September of that year when 11-year-old Ananda Dean was found dead after going missing 11 days earlier. The nation reacted with shock and horror as news broke of the gruesome murder and the tragic end the young girl experienced. The outrage sparked calls for a National Missing Children Alert program to facilitate a faster response to missing children reports. Hence, the Ananda Alert was born. One of the partners under the Ananda Alert is Hear the Children's Cry, a non-governmental organization lobbying for greater care and protection of the nation's young. As the acting executive director Maxine Taylor Cooper explains, there has been an increase in the number of reported cases of missing children since the launch of the Ananda Alert. Here the Children's Cry also launched its own missing children support program, sponsored by the Jamaica Yellow Pages three years ago. Here the Children's Cry and the Jamaica Yellow Pages missing children support program um, started in 2009 um, due to the death of Ananda Dean. Hence, um, our own part in having the Missing Children Support Program to assist traumatized families and also um, children who have gone missing and have returned home. We are trying to uh, increase our capacity and resources to enhance the program and to be more efficient and effective in what we do. In terms of the Ananda Alert, I am not sure we are getting the 100% from it. Um, there's, a, I think, a whole lot of room for improvement there. Much more can be done. Among the areas of the program which seem to be in disarray is the system which should send photos and information on missing children to the cell phones of members of the public who have subscribed to the alerts. The Lyme number provided on the Ministry of Local Government's website does not seem to work, while after subscribing to the alerts via Digicel, a confirmation message was received. However, over the last two months, for example, 353 children were reported missing, but not even a single alert was received. Several attempts to get officials from the Ministry of Local Government and Community Development to comment on the state of the Ananda Alert program proved futile. At least one partner believes the system is not working efficiently and reports are not treated with the urgency needed to rescue the more than 300 children who have vanished since last year. We are happy for the 90% or the 80% that return home. 
what we're really concerned about is each year mm -hmm. the 200 and others that don't come home nobody has ever seen or heard of where are they that's the question where are they what has happened to them how significant a link exists between trafficking and children going missing in jamaica the gleaner spoke with detective inspector blake of the organized crime investigations division um that's a question that would normally um, come up and we are not picking up any significant link between the two. The, the truth of, of the matter is though, until we're able to have a more detailed assessment, then it's going to be uh, less than accurate to come down in any one position in any absolute sense. The, but, but let us look at the statistics. For example, last year we had 2,921 persons went missing. Of that number, there were 2,126 children involved. The ratio of male to female is about 3 to 1. Now, when you look at the number returning, which is 1,930 of that 2,126, and those post-return interview that we have done that is not suggesting to us um, of any significant link between human trafficking and children going missing in Jamaica. Certainly those post-return interview not suggesting that to us. Although there is no definitive position on the number of children being trafficked, what is certain is that the bulk of missing children cases involve runaways, most of whom are from single-parent households. Numbered among the hundreds missing is 14-year-old Cadian Brown of Marcus Garvey Drive in Kingston. Cadian, who attended Denham Town High School, left home for school on February 17 and sent a text to her mother later that day saying she was not coming home. She read, she read a text. The same friend where she leave. Say so she all right. After reporting Cadian missing at the police station and waiting for three weeks with no news of her daughter, Georgette got a phone call. She called me about last week. I said she gonna come home. So I said yeah, come home and call your father. But dreams to the private number and I really answer from that she call her back. It has not been an easy road, especially for her five siblings. But why are so many of the nation's children running away? Celta Kirkland, a family counselor at Hear the Children's Cry, along with Mrs. Taylor Cooper, has conducted several counseling sessions with children who have returned home after running away, as well as families awaiting news of missing children. When they come in for counseling and you speak to them, Mrs. Cooper can attest to that, you of them are sexually abused and those we refer usually to Sissoka. But most of them are unhappy at home. They'll tell you they're unhappy because the parent either doesn't, they don't feel the parent love them, they feel neglected, they don't have money that they need to buy necessary things like even lunch money, bus fare, things like that. And they run away because they are, they go missing because they feel that there's something out there better than what they have. The story changes usually when we ask the parent to step out and we counsel the child. The story changes because the child is a little bit intimidated sometimes to say what's really wrong. And that's where we pick up and counsel the child. And a lot of times we also ask for the parent to come in so that we could also counsel the parent. They usually have a lot of family problems such as housing, they're not comfortable because it's overcrowded, I have behavioral problems, the child is not performing well in school, and then the child goes oh, missing. A lot of them are from the age group, the teenage age group, and a lot of them are sexually active. A lot of them are lured away by 
older men, some by their peers. And recently what I have been finding is that a lot of them go to homes with a woman. A woman comes and, 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 tell, and house them and doesn't call the parents. So that is very troubling given the, um, given the fact that they can be uh, abducted into sexual uh, <laughs> activities. They can be in prostitution and things like that. So it's very troubling now that they're going to another parish to live in somebody else's home who doesn't call the parent. And that has been happening very frequently. Um, as far as getting information, sometimes the information is very, very troubling to me because I'll say, how long was your teenage out? Two months. I said, where was she? She didn't tell me. And it just stops there. <laughs> you don't know where she was, what she was doing, and they don't seem as if they really care what their child is doing. Some of them come back pregnant. Some of them go to the doctor. They take them to the doctor to find out if they're having any STDs or whatever. You have varied amount of stories. But the thing is that there are some who never come back home and there are some who have never been heard from and there are few who have been found dead. So, Miss Kirkland says she suspects more children have gone missing than are being reported. The ones that we get, our clients are usually from the lower economic bracket. Yeah. But Bobby. I suspect that it's also happening in the middle and upper class. But they don't report it because they say they can, they can handle it. They, can, they, they have a friend who will do this or they have a friend in high office who can, yeah. who can do whatever for them. So it's not reported. So I suspect we have even more children going missing than is reported. Where do we go from here? Here the Children's Cry believes that at the root of the problem of missing children lies poor parenting. We realize that a lot of parents don't really know how to parent. They're not good parents because a lot of our parents are very young. They, they're teenagers when they have these children, so they really don't know much about parenting. And that contributes to the problem of missing children, I believe. Especially, we, we find that most of these children who go missing are for a single parent household. Oh, yes. And <clears throat> it's like a catch-22. You have to go out and earn to provide for that child. And so you leave that child, I don't know, unsupervised. unsupervised. Mm -hmm. But how do you fix the whole thing? We need to go back to our community um, family, uh, mm -hmm. or where the community helps to community. take care of the child. Mm -hmm. So, so you can ask somebody to give an eye as you do when you know you do what you have to do because in real in, in in essence the parents you have a problem because if they stay at home who is going to help to take care of that child who is going to provide and support and some is not one <laughs> it's many so it needs to be fixed the whole family structure needs to be fixed while miss gordon awaits news of her daughter she takes comfort in the fact that she was able to speak to Kadian, who said she was okay. Some, some parents can't not hear anything from them neither. They don't know if they're dead or alive, but she obviously she called me, but they're not private. You know, so some parents are just going to hold it, you know, and it's stress. Because you have the rest of the kids, them, good the rest of the kids, them, the think about. So, let's stress out themselves, let's get strong. Because I'm trying to pressure them, I'm not trying to make it a race, because I have them. I have the rest of the kids, them, to look after. We have to have a concerted effort. Mm -hmm. All the stakeholders have to come together because you'll find that this problem will just escalate and sooner or later we don't, we don't know what, where our children are. We really don't know or what is happening to them. So it is a serious problem. But right now it's a crisis. It's a yeah, crisis it level right now. And, and the people look at it because they, oh, they keep running away, child. Bad, the bad or something, but something is happening. You can't say because it's not your child or it's not, it's not not being here. So you have to care because it's a child and it's a human being. Very vulnerable. And I get very passionate about that because we really yeah, have to we take are. better care of our children. Mm -hmm. I mean, they are murdered, they are abused, they are, um, the atrocities. And, you know, very... It's like 
people don't really care. Exactly. Like, oh, we have become you? insensitive to the plight of our children. Mm -hmm. So we really have to go out and take care of them because we are here to protect them. And we are not doing a very good job, quite Obviously. frankly. From what we are seeing here, we're not doing a good job.